What it do, YouTube? I'm back. And I'm signed. I'm back. And I'm signed. Yeah, just got that phone call. We up. Now, how you doing, man? So I just got the phone call that Coach JD, he asked me that I want to sign with the UFL Oklahoma City Wranglers. So you know I said yes because I don't have nothing else going on. And I'm trying to get on the field and get some work. You feel me? So I'm at the field right now about to work out. But I decided to make this video real quick to let y'all know what's going on. Because a lot of people have emailed me, commented on my videos, hit me up on Snapchat, and gave me encouraging words saying, I hope that you make it. So it's only right that I tell y'all that, you know, that I made it on the team. Yeah, and I got this on because it's really cold and I'm about to go run some routes. I wrote down a little notes real quick to let y'all know what's up. So basically, I already told y'all they signed me. I'm hyped about that. I'm turned up. You know what I'm saying? And they signed me as a receiver. So I'm so glad they signed me as a receiver because I didn't tell y'all this in the last video. But I was locking down people so much that at the end of the tryout, you know, if you ever been to one of these like CFL tryouts or USFL or combines, they usually put the top three or five wide receivers against the top three DBs. Well, at this one, they picked the top two receivers versus the top two DBs. And I was with the top two DBs. So I had to do a little showcase at the end, and I locked my man up again. So I'm like, man, maybe I should not have done so good at DB because they might try to sign me at DB. I mean, I, I'll do it. But like that ain't it ain't my thing, you know. But I I'll, I'll strap somebody up if I have to. So he said gonna sign me as a receiver, which is cool. My homeboy Mark had texted him. Well, actually, he texted my homeboy Mark right after the tryout. He said we just finished. He said your boy Booker, he legit. Come on, bro. And then Mark was like <laughs> superstar receiver type stuff, cause he was just fishing to see like what he's gonna say about me playing DB. So then JD was like. Oh, yeah, for sure. The only reason that we don't do the showcase at DB because we got to see if he, he'll he be willing to do it because it's only a, like a 23-man roster. So I might have to hop in sometimes and help out at DB. You know, small league, new league, it's cool. I'll do that. So, boom. So they so that's, that's that. So something else I got to tell y'all I wrote down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I'm glad I did this, this tryout because, like I told y'all in the last video, I feel like these tryouts just be money grabs, honestly. Like, cause I didn't been to, I done, I done the spring league, I done the ANC combine, I done multiple CFL tryouts. Like, I did a lot of stuff. Like, I ain't got no reimbursement on my money. This about to be the first time. Y'all that saw my spring league highlights, they on my channel. Like, I routed up every DB the whole week. I killed on special teams. Like, like not even like kick return, punt return. Like, I'm talking about like being a corner at gunner, like pushing people out of bounds, blocking, you know, making tackles. I call it interception on, on special teams when they try to do a fake. You know, I, I um was getting crazy separation from former NFL DBs. And still, really no look from that. I done CFL trials where I would kill the DBs and like at the end, like they do the showcase, top five receivers, I'm always in there every time. No matter what combine I go to, I'm gonna always be in the top five or top three of the at the end of the showcase, cause I always get busy. But the problem with CFL was, it was always my 40 time. It's like, I would never really work on my 40 time like that. It's a lot of technique to go into your 40 and stuff. So I would just go out and just run and I wouldn't run like a super fast time. So they always go back and be like, man, we can't just accept this 40 time, bro. I know you was out here killing, but bro, this this 40 time just ain't it, you know? So they would always hold me back. So I always felt like these were kind of like money grabs. Like I spent like over $1,000 at the spring league. Glad that this one just a money grab. Well, it was for some of them, but not for your boy. Okay, it's I'm as a receiver. I already said that. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about my plan for this league, you know, because I seen people in the comments, this one guy, he was telling me that, like, the UFL is a scam. Because it used to be a thing before, and now it's the first year coming back. So he don't think that it's legit. But, you know, they say that training count starts March the 11th. So that's right around the corner. So we will see. But my goal for this league is to, every week, shop myself to the USFL. The USFL starts two weeks after us. 
So my plan is to have two weeks worth of film before the USFL start. And then the next three weeks, I'm going to have five weeks worth of film. And I, and I just want to ball out for those five weeks because you know that players in the USFL are going to uh, get hurt, unfortunately. They're going to underperform. So I want to come in and take someone's spot. So my goal is to be in the best shape I can, the best, do the best I can every game and just ball out every game in hopes to get an opportunity at the USFL. And then, you know, the ultimate goal is the NFL. And with this contract with the USFL, you can leave. If a, if a USFL team wants you, SFL, um, USFL, well, I think I said NFL, CFL, USFL, SFL. If one of them teams wants you, you know, they, this this contract will let you leave. I read it. It's, it's good. So, you know, so that's the plan. The plan is just a stepping stone because I need film because I haven't been, I haven't been on the field in a while. So, this is going to help me. Then I'm building relationships with coaches that I already coached at high levels and then played in the NFL. My coaching staff is legit. My head coach is Coach JD. He was drafted in the sixth round back in the day. I don't know what year, I forget. Uh, he was on three different NFL teams. And he even played in UFL in 2010. So he had played on, he got NFL experience. He was drafted. You know, he coached in the USFL. He was coaching running backs and co-offensive coordinator. You know, so he got connections, and he seemed like a really good guy there to help me to reach my goals. Then I got Coach Franks, who played DB. He was drafted in the fifth round, and he was on, like, two different NFL teams. He coached for the New Jersey Generals that um, Turpin was on. You know, Turpin time, Cavante Turpin for the Cowboys. So he got connections. He know people, and, 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 you know, he can help me, too. And a funny story, a funny story about him is this man. So when I was doing DB, you know, I don't play DB. So he was trying to coach me up. I'm like, listen, man, I'm just out here bull stuff. I don't really play DB like that. He's like, oh, you really don't? I was like, nice. Nah. Like, Boy, you look like something. So it's so funny. So every time I would go, he would never say good job. He'd just say, you look like something. He'd put, he, he'd, you look like something. And then at the end of the tryout. But they're taking our picture and stuff, getting our contact information. And you just say, introduce yourself to coaches and all that. So I walked past him. He said, yo, book. I said, yo, he said, you really never played DB? I said, nah. He said, oh, you look like some. You look like some. I was like, all right. <laughs> so like, like, cool. I look like some. So then after that, we got Coach Wilkerson, who was like the most decorated coach in on our team. He played for four NFL teams and he was in the league for 10 years. He was drafted sixth round too. Cause Wickerson is going to be the defensive coach and he seemed like a good guy. Like, you know, passionate about the game. It can teach me a lot. And uh, I'm just excited to learn from all these guys. With all these guys have in common, they all went to the University of Oklahoma also. And then last but not least, we got Coach Pitts who also has professional experience and college experience and he's been a coach for a while. So I got a great staff of men around me that can help me reach my ultimate goal. And I don't feel like they're going to try to hold me in this league. I feel like they are trying to help me evolve and become the athlete and the player that I want to be. So I'm just excited to help in any way that I can. I got nothing to be proud of, everything to be thankful for. Shout out to God. Shout out to uh, JD, shout out to like everything just fall into the place. Like all the people that help me and um, want me to want to see me do good. All the people in the comments, bro, y'all understand? Like y'all watch my videos. That's crazy to me. I just had zero subscribers like a month ago, and now I got almost a thousand. Like I can't even like really like understand it. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. That's really crazy, but I really appreciate it. That's why I try to write people back, and I'm going to have a 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I don't know what I'm giving away yet. Might be some money. Might be some gear. I don't know. What do y'all want? Tell me in the comments what you think I should give. Should I give money? Should I get cleats? Not my cleats. I'm talking about some brand new cleats, some brand new gloves, brand new mouthpiece, a, a fleece. Like this, I think it's called a song. Three something. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do y'all athletes want? I'm gonna get it for you. I'm gonna pick somebody. I might pick one, two, maybe three people, and I'm gonna send y'all some. 
So let me know what y'all think that I should give away for the thousand subscriber giveaway. I'm only like 20 subscribers away. Shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm about to go out here and get this work. Book down. I'm out, man. Love y'all. Peace. These niggas ain't a whole lot. Can't trust you, see my bro rock. Right? You better keep that door lock. Still trapping up in that old spot. Still keep a bar full glock. That FN with that North Star. Bad niggas run with that Polar. Shit get real when people get involved. Then that family fall out. The streets ain't like your job, nigga. You can't call out. Once you win, then you win. It's only one way out. If I was you and you was me, you probably take the same route.